Hey guys, Kevin here. A few days ago I did a tutorial where I showed you how you can create an overhead camera using a microphone studio arm. So I, ju I just want to do a continuation video to that and this wasn't the first choice that I came to. I looked at a lot of different options and in this video I want to talk about the other options that are available to you if you want to create an overhead camera. Now, all of these share one theme and that they're quite easy to set up. They're, you don't need any DIY skills. There's a lot of great tutorials online on YouTube. You'll find a lot of great videos. And there's people doing fantastic hacks. They're using like lighting, they're using stands, they're using wood, and they're constructing these unique overhead cameras, you know, just out of really cheap raw materials. I suck at DIY, so that was not something that I was wanting to do. So what I looked at was a lot of other options where you could just buy them and it would just save me a lot of time and effort and you know hopefully be a little bit better for me so i've got my tripod here and this is what i use for years i think this is what most people use when they first start recording videos so if you've got an overhead camera you would use a tripod and you would just you know just film at an angle like that you know move move this the fluid head or move the ball head to the angle that you want and um, it's why most of my overhead shots were Kind of more at a kind of 45 degree angle. Um, now, a tripod works quite well, right? You can't dispute that. It does work well. The problem is that a lot of the time, you kind of need to set the tripod like this. And in order to, you know, you kind of have to stretch to the side and your hands are like this. You can see what you're doing when you're doing this. But I found there was a lot of times where I'm, say I'm reviewing a, a gaming handheld or something. I'm doing that. But then you've not actually got it in the shot, so you can't even see what's in the shot. Whereas if you stand at the behind the camera, you can see exactly what you're recording. But, you know, it's hard to get your hands around, so your hands have to go around like this to try, you know, do what it, whatever it is. It could be an unboxing, it could be looking at a watch, it could be anything like that. Um, for a lot of people, that just isn't practical either. You know, if, if you're a painter, if you're doing something artistic and you need, you need to examine it closely, you, you, a tripod just isn't going to cut it. There's, I mean, the problem with doing that is, right, another option for that um, would be for me to sit here, use the tripod, but set the tripod at the other side. And what you do is you just film it normally and I would just do it like this. Now, that, that was one situation I did consider. You know, I would just sit and, you know, just record it normally. I would film it from the other side of the table. And then simply all you do is in post-production, I would go into, well, I use Premiere Pro. I would go into Premiere Pro and I would just flip the video upside down. Two seconds, very easy solution. But I was looking for something a little bit, I don't know, something a little bit more flexible. Now, some of the options I looked at, um, a lot of them were Manfrotto products, but another tripod that I looked at was the Vanguard Ultra Pro 263AB and I had this in my shopping cart, I was all ready to buy it and then I decided not to but it looks like a fantastic tripod it's about £130 or £150 or you know $150 yeah, Amazon.com um, and what it is, it's a really flexi flexible tripod but the key thing here is it's got a horizon horizontal column so the column goes all the way up and then it can lie on its side and it can go horizontally. So you can set it up the tripod and then, you know, the the horizontal column would come this way and you can use it as an overhead camera. And I saw a video about this online and it looked like a really good setup. The other option for that, there's another one, a Manfrotto 055X PROB. That's another option. Some A lot of people compare the two, but in general, the Vanguard gets a little bit, you know, slightly better reviews. The reason I didn't go for it in the end was because, really just because of space, you know, I, my office isn't tiny. I've seen people with smaller studios than mine, but, you know, I, I'm trying to stop it being cluttered with so many things in the room. When you add in lighting, when you add in, you know, I've got things for storage as well. I've got a bookcase. There's not a lot of room now because of all these things. And I, I just thought the tripod is something else. It's just going to be sitting there. The thing is, I thought, well, I'll use it as a normal tripod as well, but real realistically, I do so many overhead shots because of unboxings and tutorials and my YouTube videos that I would just sit there all the time with this overhead, um, you know, horizontal co uh, column being used to film. And 
you know, I'm not ruling out, at, you know, buying this in the future, but I just thought at the moment, when I wasn't using it, I was just going to take up a lot of space in the corner. And if I, did, if I tidied it up and, you know, compacted it in, um, it would be a pain to set up again. And I'm trying to look for something that speeds up the process of recording rather than slow it down. Uh, it does look like a really good solution though. So, you know, you might want to consider that. Buy a tripod with a horizontal column. Now, another thing that I did consider was... Um, just buying the horizontal column on its own. You can buy the Manfrotto 131DB in the UK it's £80. I think it was 100 on Amazon.com uh, $100 and it's just a horizontal arm. Now the horizontal arm will sit, I think it's is it a 3 eighths or 5 eighths, it's a 3 eighths thread on both ends of the arm. I think it's 5 eighths at the bottom and what it will do, it will sit on your tripod, uh, you know it, it would replace your tripod head instead of like a ball head you would put this on and it's a, a long kind of horizontal pole and at both ends you have three eighths threads. Now that's a, that's quite a cool interesting option. You could for example put ball heads at each of the, the horizontal columns and then you can rotate them around. You can use it, you know, got a double camera on each end of the pole but it, it didn't seem practical uh, for me because well for one I would need to buy a replacement ball head, ball head for this, the, the bowl for the video uh, tripod that I've got. So that was going to be like 30, 40 pounds. And then I would have to buy that, which is 80 pounds. And then at that price, I just thought, well, I'm basically paying the same money. I, I could just go and buy the Vanguard Alta Pro. So I thought, okay, if it was a lot, the thing is what I found out with the horizontal arm was there wasn't a lot of alternatives. You know, there wasn't a lot of cheaper alternatives. If there was one at, you know, like $20 or something like that, I would have just bought it for this and just set it on top. But it wasn't there, so I didn't really consider it. Now, the other one that I did uh, really consider, and I was very close to buying that one as well, Manfrotto do articulating arms, and they do a double, they do a single and double articulated arm, and you can get it with one section or two sections. Uh, sorry, two sections or three sections. So what they've got is, is, is it's an arm, that, so it sits in a spigot, and you need to buy a clamp for the spigot, so the clamp's more money. <laughs> but um, you can get um, two sections, is, is essentially like an L, and it will sit like this. And three sections is, well, you can go like this, then this, and then that, you know. Um, the three sections, one is a little bit longer, so it's a little bit more flexible. And the you can buy it in single or double. Now, single is simp simply one pole, and double is two poles. So that really relates to how much load it can carry. The single one, I think it was just a couple of kilograms. It wasn't much, probably about the same as this. Um, the double ones can carry a lot of weight but I looked at uh, there's a really good video from Dave it's from three years ago Dave from EEV blog and he reviewed it and it looks really good you can slide it and you can put it in any position for a lot of you guys out there I think this could be a, a really good solution but one thing about it is that it's fixed it, it can't rotate in any way it can move around in order to move it around you need to move the clamp so um, it wasn't really practical for me that those retailer well the, the price of those ones depend on whether you're getting a single or a double or whether two sections or three sections the single section one's actually quite cheap if you're doing overhead drawings you know maybe the single Manfrotto arm with two sections would be ideal you can pick it up for like $30 but the more expect the double and with the three sections, you're talking 80, 90 pounds, 100 dollars, that kind of thing. For me though, because it couldn't rotate, you know, I kind of moved away from that. Um, and ultimately, all those all those ones I did, you know, give consideration to them. But I, I, once I got this road PSA boom arm, which I'm talking on just now, and you can see that I can move it around, I realized how good this is. And um, you know, you can buy the heel. A studio armor you could buy the one from road and the fact that you can sp i can spin this around 360 degrees i can move it up i can move it down i can move it anyway and it really makes for me it really makes doing a uh, overhead videos a breeze i've got it set up with this a uh, 20 dollar ball head 15 pounds it cost me in the uk and i've got it in that so i can put it in any angle i can rotate the lcd screen to me and i can also get into the battery and the memory card without having to take the camera off. But this thing has got a quick release plate, so if I do need to take the camera off and put another camera on, it's fairly simple. For me, I found that this was the most practical solution for me because of the setup that I've got. Um, 
it's on a clamp and it's pretty much staying in the same position all the time, but it's like two seconds to just move the clamp into a different position. But it, it's it's so flexible and you've probably noticed that the last few videos that I've done on YouTube, I've been using this and there's, you know, I'll cut from that shot to the overhead camera and uh, I will do that. Um, and I'll show you, I'll show you, I mean, if I turn this camera on, I really should have prepared this. I don't even know if I'm pushing the record button. There we go. Okay, so this is essentially what I'm getting with the overhead camera. You can see that I can move it around like this. I can move it around. I can go up high. And when it's up high, I can then spin it around. And then I can move it back around. And I can get as close as I want or I can get as high as I want. And then I can change the zoom, go in and out. And go up high, I can move my hands around. And um, for me, it, it, it just is a practical solution. Um, I do a lot of unboxings on this channel, as you know, and I also do, you know, close-ups when I'm when I'm explaining something. Um, I'm going to do, for example, a video on this audio interface in a week or so, and you know what I'll do is I'll position this clamp over there so that I can just bring it round and I can zoom in and show you each part of the audio interface. For me, it's the most practical solution, but I do realise that. It, what you guys are going to do um, will depend on the type of videos that you're recording, whether it's unboxings, whether you need to be close up, whether, I don't know, I mean, there's the people are using overhead cameras in so many different ways for like food preparation, for food advice, for drawings, for painting, for anything artistic. Um, but for me, this, this setup just seemed to work out really, really well with my desk, with my office, with my setup. Um, so for me, it was the most practical. I hope you guys have found this useful uh, because for me, I looked at a lot of different options and I looked at a lot of videos online, but there wasn't really any comparing them and there wasn't really any that talked about the benefits of using a studio arm either. Uh, but I hope, hopefully I've saved you some time and I'll, I'll put some links to the, to the items that I mentioned in this video. If you, like me, and you suck at DIY and you don't want to, you know, start drilling things and buying all these spigots and screws and parts and down to Ikea and got all these parts. I mean, if you're trying to save money, that is the, definitely the way to go. I do recommend doing it the DIY route if you're trying to save money. But I, would, I just wanted to get a solution and then, you know, make sure that something I could just take out of the box and, and it worked. That's all, that's all I wanted. I wanted the simplest and the quickest. And... Um, I'm not God without as a cheesy cheesy line, but time is money, and I, I just thought if I was going to spend three or four hours doing that, I would, I'd be as well just doing working, you know, doing some work on my websites or something, and then I could use the money to buy something better that I could ever create. So that's the route I went down. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful, and until next time, take care.